For two hours we flew over the taiga, climbing higher and higher into the sky. The increasing height of the mountains forced this. Gentle and calm in the vicinity of Abaza, the mountains gradually became harsh and disturbing. Sun. Drenched green affable valleys gradually began to narrow, and at the end of the path turned into dark precipitous gaps with silvery threads of rivers and streams. We go to the point. The commander of the helicopter shouted in my ear. Light glass in the sun, a river gleamed in a dark hole, and a helicopter went over it, down, down, we sank onto the pebbles near the sediment of geologists. Until the Lakovsky dwelling, we knew, from here 15 kilometers up the river, and then up the mountain. But a guide was needed. We had an agreement with him on the radio before our departure from Abaza. And now a hefty master driller, a hereditary Siberian set of Arafaces Antovich, and his comrades throw swamp boots, backpacks, and a sore wrapped in burlap into the open door of the helicopter. And we are again in the air, rushing over Abakan, repeating the bends of the river in a narrow gorge. It is impossible to sit at the Lykov's hut. She stands on the side of a mountain. And there is not, except for their garden, not a single bald patch in the taiga. There is, however, somewhere nearby a raised bog, which you can't sit on, but you can hover low. Cautious pilots make circle after circle, trying on a clearing, on which water sparkles dangerously in the grass. During these visits, we see the very same vegetable garden found from the air below. Garden. Across the slope. Lines of potato furrows, some other greenery. And next to it is a blackened hut. On the second call at the hut, we saw two figures. A man and a woman. Shielding their hands from the sun, they are watching the helicopter. The appearance of this machine means the appearance of people for them. We hovered over the swamp, left our luggage in the grass, jumped ourselves onto the cushions of damp moss. A minute later, without soaking its wheels in the swamp, the helicopter rose resiliently and immediately disappeared behind a wooded shoulder of the mountain. Silence, a deafening silence, well known to everyone who, like paratroopers, left the helicopter in half a minute like this. And here in the swamp Arafay confirmed the sad news, which had already been heard in Abaza, there were only two people left in the Lykov family. The grandfather and the youngest daughter Agafia. 3. Dmitri, Sabin, and Natalia. Suddenly, almost one after another, died last autumn. Before, it used to be, five of us went out, if they heard a helicopter. Now they saw it themselves. 2. Discussing with us the reasons for the unexpected death, the guide mistakenly took the wrong direction from the swamp, and we wandered in the taiga for two hours, believing that we were moving towards the hut, but it turned out that we were walking just from it. When they realized the mistake, they considered it a blessing to return to the swamp again, and from here dance. An hour of walking along the path, already known to us from the stories of geologists, and here it is, the purpose of the journey. A hut, which has grown into the ground by the window, black with time and rains, furnished with poles on all sides, up to the very roof heaped up with household rubbish, boxes and twos from birch bark, firewood, hollowed out tubs and troughs and something else, not immediately clear to a fresh eye. In the residential world, this building under a large cedar would be mistaken for a bathhouse. But this was a dwelling that had stood here alone for about 40 years, potato furrows running uphill with a ladder, a dark green island of hemp on potatoes, and a field of rye the size of a volleyball court gave the place, which had probably been reclaimed by a lot of work near the taiga, a peaceful, inhabited look. There were no people, however, to be seen. There was no barking of a dog, no cackling of chickens, or other sounds common to human habitation. A wild, looking cat, suspiciously studying us from the roof of the hut, jumped and threw a bullet into the hemp. Moreover, the bunting bird flew up and flew over the foamy stream. Karbasipovich. Is he alive? Called Arafay, going up to the door, the top jam of which was below his shoulder. Something stirred in the hut. The door creaked, and we saw an old man emerge into the sun. We woke him up. He rubbed his eyes, screwed up his eyes, ran his fingers over his disheveled beard, and finally exclaimed. Lord, Arafi. Dot dot the old man was clearly glad to meet him, but he did not shake hands with anyone. Approaching, he folded his palms near his chest and bowed to each of those who stood. And we waited, waited. It was decided that the fireman was a helicopter. 
and they fell asleep in sorrow. The old man also recognized Nikolai Stinovich, who had been here a year ago. And this is a guest from Moscow. A friend of mine. He is interested in your life. Said Arafay. The old man cautiously bowed in my direction. You are welcome, you are welcome, while Arafay was explaining where we sat and how foolishly we got lost, I could get a good look at the old man. It was no longer as homespun. Mossy as it was discovered and described by geologists. A felt hat given by someone, made him look like a beekeeper. Dressed in pants and a shirt of factory fabric. There are felt boots on the feet, a black scarf under the hat. Protection from mosquitoes. Slightly hunched over, but firm and mobile enough for his 80 years. Speech is intelligible, without the slightest flaws inherent in age. Often he says, agreeing, eater. Eater, which means, well, well. Slightly deaf, now and then he straightens his handkerchief near his ear and leans towards the interlocutor. But the look is attentive, tenacious. At the moment when the views of the harvest in the garden were discussed, the door of the hut opened slightly and a gaffier ran out with a mouse, who did not hide a childish joy from seeing people. Also palms joined together, bows to the belt. The machine flew, flew, but there are no good people and no. She said in a sing-song voice, dragging out her words. This is what the blessed people say. And it took a little getting used to so as not to get lost in the tone in which they usually speak with the blessed. It is impossible to judge the age of this woman by her appearance. The facial features of a person under 30, but the color of the skin, is somehow unnaturally white and unhealthy, recalling the sprouts of potatoes that had been lying for a long time in the warm, damp darkness. Agafia was dressed in a baggy black shirt up to her feet. Bare feet. On his head is a black linen shawl. The people in front of us were covered in coal spots, as if they had just been cleaning pipes. It turned out that before our arrival, they continuously extinguished the taiga fire, which was approaching their very dwelling, for four days. The old man led us along the path behind the garden, and we saw, the trees were charred, the burned blueberry crunched under our feet. And all this in three stone throws from the garden. June, which floods Moscow with rains, was dry and hot in the local forests. When the thunderstorms started, fires broke out in many places. Then the lightning hit the old cedar, and she got busy, like a candle. Fortunately, there was no wind, the resulting fire was approaching the dwelling along the ground. We poured the fire with water, overflowed with branches, covered with earth. And he is getting closer and closer. Said Agafia. They are sure, it was God who sent them a saving rain. And today the helicopter was also spinning at his direction. The machine woke us up. When she flew away, and you did not come, you lay down again. We've lost a lot of strength, said the old man. It's time to untie the backpacks. Gifts. This ancient way of showing friendliness. Were promptly received. The old man gratefully held out his hands, accepting a work suit, a cloth jacket, a box with a tool, a bundle of candles. Having said what the word is supposed to and politely looking at everything, he wrapped each gift with a piece of birch bark and put it under the canopy of the roof. Later we found many products of our garment and rubber industry there, and a whole warehouse of hardware. Everyone who came here brought something. We presented a gaffu with stockings, fabric, sewing accessories. Thimble. Dot dot. She happily showed her father a metal cap. She was even more pleased with the chin's apron, a scarf and red mitten sewn by an experienced woman's hand. Wishing to please us, Agafia covered the handkerchief over the one in which she slept and extinguished the fire. And she walked like that all day. To our surprise, soap and matches were rejected. We can't do that. We heard the same thing when I opened a cardboard box with food delivered from Moscow. A little bit of everything. Biscuits, bread, crackers, raisins, dates, chocolate, butter, canned food, tea, sugar, honey, condensed milk. Everything was politely stopped by two palms in front of us. The old man took only a can of condensed milk in his hands and, after hesitating, put it on the heap. For cats. With great difficulty, we persuaded them to take lemons. You definitely need it now. After asking questions, where does it grow? The old man framed the hem of his shirt, but told Agafia to carry the lemons into the stream. 
let them lie there until evening. The next day we saw how the old man and his daughter, according to our instructions, squeezed lemons into a mug and smelled the crusts with curiosity. Then we received gifts. A gaffu walked around us with a sack, pouring pine nuts into our pockets, brought a birch bark box with potatoes. The old man showed the place where you can light a fire and, politely saying we cannot, when asked to have a meal together, withdrew with a gaffu to the hut to pray. I ask you to share these videos in your social networks, using the buttons under the video and subscribe to the channel. I ask you to go and watch other videos about Agafulakova, which you now see on the screen in the end screensavers.